street again Got my head in the game With the red light on I'm just waiting for the change Got my head down low Hi, Jay Fallon here. Thanks for listening to The Slippery Slope. So I noticed a few headlines coming through, again, about police earlier on the week. And uh, reading some of these headlines, uh, some of it was a little bad news for police in general across Australia. Uh, but I realised something, that Australia is in a fairly dire predicament when it comes to policing standards, is my opinion, within Australia. And I believe it, it all reverts back to poor leadership we've had extremely poor leadership for probably the best part of a the best part of a decade now but definitely since the uh well since just before the pandemic really took hold uh and when what we saw during the pandemic is we, we saw leadership failing to really lead the troops what they were doing uh, they were just uh they, they were just bowing to political demands uh we had bureaucrats coming in and calling the shots and then we didn't have leadership we didn't uh we didn't have the hierarchy and i'll speak specifically for queensland hierarchy supporting the troops on the ground uh supporting the men and women who were trying to do the job that they're they paid to do that they want to do supporting their community instead we had leadership come out and attack officers uh, attack the people who they're supposed to support and and they really let down not just the policing community but uh the community uh as a whole you know um the, the states where they're serving and this is the problem and then okay i'll go through a few of these different headlines just to explain to you what i mean this headline here revealed is from the guardian says revealed australian police accused of improperly accessing force databases more than 2,000 times. Uh, so basically saying advocates say complaints about unauthorised access of police databases may be tip of the iceberg and are particularly worried about cases involving family violence. Uh, if Fran noticed her son-in-law's behaviour was escalating, she says he was increasingly controlling of her daughter's Sarah's life monitoring her finances and being verbally abusive uh, the three were all living together and the situation felt particularly risky because he was a police officer he had surveillance skills who the heck is this fella precious actually yeah, don't worry about that he had surveillance skills and access to information that seemed to give him a sense of power and he held it over their heads uh, so you know i was reading this story anyway and uh i thought wow well, it's it's crazy that's how did we get this far where police feel that they are that they are able to access information which really should be out of their bounds? You know, we, we all know you're trained, you're you're taught, it's drummed into you that you know you can't be accessing personal information, and yet people, uh, you know, people will go after it. Um, people will go and try and push the boundaries anyway, especially when you come for these. Uh, these issues, if you've got these issues with uh, domestic violence surfacing. Uh, this next headline, police actions to be scrutinised after alleged domestic violence murder. Reading this the other day, I thought, wow, this is just uh, a sad story. So a critical incident investigation has been launched to examine police's response to a domestic violence incident in northern New South Wales overnight in which a woman was alleged allegedly murdered. A man has been charged with murder over the death of a woman believed to be in her 40s at a home on Johnston Street in Casino, southwest of Byron Bay. So a call was made to triple zero after the incident, shortly after, about the incident, shortly after uh, 1.30 a.m. New South Wales Police Assistant Commissioner Peter McKenna, APM, has said. Uh, however, police did not acknowledge the call until 2.25. Wow. Uh, then rushed to the scene to arrive at 2.27. They arrived to find the woman breathing but unconscious with obvious injuries to her head. Unfortunately, her condition deteriorated and she died at the scene, McKenna said. Uh, so a man, 31, was arrested at the scene and taken to Lismore Police Station. Uh, this man has been, uh, af this afternoon, has been charged with one account of murder. McKenna said the time frame in which police responded to the call out prompted the need for an independent investigation. The delay has given me enough concern that I have asked for an independent investigation. 
investigation, McKenna, uh, McKenna has said. I was reading that thinking, well, I wonder what I wonder what they're going to come up with. I wonder what the uh, you know the what they're going to say. Well, we've we've discovered this. This is what we have learnt, and so this is how we we can prevent this from happening again. I think, I think uh, New South Wales hasn't started with international recruiting yet. So this is where I think they're heading. Now, there's other headlines getting around about New South Wales, and they're, they're starting to really pump themselves up, saying how you know they're doing such a great job because their recruitment is going quite well. They've started rebuilding the force. However, uh, I'll bring up the next uh, headline. You know, this headline here says police recruitment surges as new programs are introduced to encourage more people to join the New South Wales Police Force. So this is in May of 2024. And, you know, it's all great news when you're reading when you're reading down here. You think, wow, that's that's really good news. It's good to see that they're rebuilding. However, you get a couple of paragraphs in and they say uh, we are currently carrying more than 1,000 500 vacancies, a legacy of the previous government's neglect and mismanagement of police recruitment and retention. So I'm sitting there going, well, okay. So it's it's great that uh, they're starting to rebuild, but they're still carrying 1,500, 1,500 vacancies. That is huge, huge. But this is the problem that we've had for the last, like I said, the best part of a decade. Across Australia, we have had poor leadership, and they can blame previous government. Everyone wants to blame the previous government. It's always the other fellow's fault, isn't it? When you get in power, it's always everyone else's fault. But as as we've seen here in Queensland, they can't blame the previous government. They've been in power for far too long. Um, we can blame the previous government all we like. If you've got poor leadership in your ranks and you're not leading the team the way you're supposed to, you've got to look in the mirror and say, "Well, this." may be just my fault. And if you're not willing to change, like I've said before, nothing will change if nothing changes. So we can't sit there and and cry about how things aren't going right and how the the how the um how the the rank and file keep leaving, how there's constantly a rotating door there if you're not willing to change the way you're doing things. Uh, but this is something that we've seen uh, well it's permeating throughout the whole of the nation throughout all of Australia. So we've got other headlines that have come up. You know, South Australia's got their multi-million dollar campaign goes overseas to boost police recruits amid staffing crisis. That came out towards the end of the year. So South Australia's uh, doing that. Obviously, Queensland. Queensland has started recruiting from overseas. Uh, this headline here, uh, which came out on the ABC News, says police recruitment crisis is putting officers and the community at risk. This was in May of 2023. So this says the organisation representing police unions across the country says officers and the community will be at risk if a recruitment crisis isn't addressed soon. We're in a crisis at this a crisis situation at this point in time, said Ian Levers. Uh, he's the president of the Queensland Police Union and the Police Federation of Australia. He says it's a real challenge, not only recruiting, but in the retention of police across Australia. And we are putting the police officers who are left at risk and we are putting the community at risk. So this is the issue, okay? It's been, like he said, real challenge, not just recruiting, but the retention rate. Uh, obviously, you come over here, Queensland lures international police talents under a new agreement. Uh, and what else? WA polices a new initiative could put overseas recruits on a pathway to citizenship. So I was reading this the story about about that uh, unfortunate well situation in New South Wales where a domestic violence incident has turned into murder by the looks of it, and then you're reading about uh, recruitment and and what's happening with uh, recruitment in New South Wales, and you realise there are still fifteen hundred vacancies short of what they uh, what they need within their ranks, and you realise we have got a major problem within Australia. We need police and we need good quality officers. And just as importantly, we need good leadership within police. Like I said, we've had almost a decade, the best part of a decade now of poor leadership. And it was, look, just speaking, just from what I could see within Queensland police where I was serving, 
the leadership there, their idea of training up new leadership was training managers. They were next, never actually training leaders. Every now and then they would get leaders come through, a natural born leader come up through the ranks. Okay. And that's if they would allow them to actually go up the ranks. Because quite often the natural leaders, the good leaders, uh, you will see their leadership's leadership abilities are stifled. They are kept at the uh the sergeant, maybe senior sergeant, but very often they they're kept at just the sergeant's ranks. Um, and the people that are allowed to go up are the people that uh, the politicians, the the people that um, can write a good essay, the people that can talk about themselves, you know, really well. Quite often they're not. They're not great leaders. They can just talk about themselves really well. They can just write a good essay, and they they know management processes. And what I saw in Queensland Police Service was you had a lot of management, a lot of managers but you didn't have many leaders. So we've had quite a few le- uh, quite a few years of poor leadership, lack of leadership quality. Uh, and it, this all just came to the forefront when the pandemic, the plan, sorry, the pandemic came about. This all came to the forefront. Uh, that's when we could really see, wow, managers aren't good when you're going into battle. When, when the, when the, when the crap hits the ground, when you really need people to step up and 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 lead, you're you're really in trouble if all you got is a group of managers and you've got no leaders in the ranks. And this is what happened. This is what I saw. This is what I believe happened within QPS. And this is what I think has been happening around the rest of the rest of the states around the country. So when I look at what's happening now with New South Wales, okay, they're starting to get back up on track but they're still behind in recruitment. I think what they're going to be, what they will soon announce is, hey, we still can't attract enough people, so let's start recruiting from overseas. All of the state police services need to do a complete overhaul of their leadership teams. Complete overhaul. And completely rethink the way they've been looking at their leadership teams for the last decade or possibly even longer, two decades. Get rid of the managers. Start helping the leaders and training leaders. You you have natural leaders, but you can still train. You can still teach leadership and stop placating to the politicians. We need strong men and strong women leading in the police services and you know what woke ideologies will not save your country woke ideologies will not protect your countries your country woke ideology will only bring about disaster for you and i we need strong men and women like i said to lead our armed forces and to lead our police enough enough of the demonic woke ideologies that's my opinion i'm jay fallon thanks for listening to the slippery slope and say it is a dream and please don't go away just give me one more day what if i could what if i could turn back time I'd make you smile again And if I could I could unbreak your heart And we could start again And what if I could What if I could turn back time I'd make you smile again And if I could I could unbreak your heart And we could start again Again, we can start again. Again, we can start again. Again, we can start again.